the great controversy between good and evil will increase in intensity to the very close of time. In all ages the wrath of Satan has been manifested against the Church of Christ, and God has bestowed his grace and spirit upon his people to strengthen them to stand against the power of the evil one. When the apostles of Christ were to bear his gospel to the world and to record it for all future ages, they were especially endowed with the enlightenment of the Spirit. But as the church approaches her final deliverance, Satan is to work with greater power. He comes down having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. Revelation 12, verse 12. He will work with all power and signs and lying wonders. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. That mastermind that once was highest among the angels of God has been wholly bent to the work of deception and ruin. And all the depths of satanic skill and subtlety acquired, all the cruelty developed during these struggles of the ages, will be brought to bear against God's people in the final conflict. And in this time of peril, the followers of Christ are to bear to the world the warning of the Lord's second advent and the people are to be prepared to stand before him at his coming without spot and blameless. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14 At this time, the special endowment of divine grace and power is not less needful to the church than in apostolic days. Through the illumination of the Holy Spirit, the scenes of the long-continued conflict between good and evil have been opened to the writer of these pages. From time to time I have been permitted to behold the working, in different ages, of the great controversy between Christ, the Prince of Life, the author of our salvation, and Satan, the Prince of Evil, the author of sin, the first transgressor of God's holy law. Satan's enmity against Christ has been manifested against his followers. The same hatred of the principles of God's law, the same policy of deception by which error is made to appear as truth, by which human laws are substituted for the law of God, and men are led to worship the creature rather than the creator, may be traced in all the history of the past. Satan's efforts to misrepresent the character of God to cause men to cherish a false conception of the Creator, and thus to regard him with fear and hate rather than with love. His endeavours to set aside the divine law, leading the people to think themselves free from its requirements, and his persecution of those who dare to resist his deceptions, have been steadfastly pursued in all ages. They may be traced in the history of patriarchs, prophets and apostles, of martyrs and reformers. In the great final conflict, Satan will employ the same policy, manifest the same spirit, and work for the same end as in all preceding ages. That which has been, will be, except that the coming struggle will be marked with a terrible intensity such as the world has never witnessed. Satan's deceptions will be more subtle, his assaults more determined. If it were possible, he would lead astray the elect. Mark chapter 13 verse 22.